Okay. Separable differential equations. Okay. So um, we've kind of been doing these kind of sort of. Um, so I just want to look at a few more examples of doing these differential equations. The key is your y's have to be on one side, your x's have to be on the other side, but you have to be very careful about the way you, you, that you move them, okay? Um, so traditionally, we leave the y on the left side and the x on the right side. So this problem is x squared plus 4 times dy over dx is equal to xy. Now, I think it's most helpful to write this uh, like this so you can actually see that the dy is on the top over the dx. Okay, so it's very obvious to move the dx, we need to multiply both sides by the dx. <clears throat> now move it to the right side. Um, we need y on the left side, so we need to divide both sides by y. And that x squared plus 4, it has to move as a singular unit to the other side. It's in the numerator right now, so we need to divide both sides by x squared plus 4. Okay, I did a whole lot of stuff in one step. Do I need to go backwards and do it in more? No, so we're good? Can you okay. Divide x, y, y, y. Yes, you can to separate those variables. Okay, so we've got on the left side 1 over y. It's very important that it's 1 over y <clears throat> dy is equal to x over x squared plus 4 dx. Okay, now we can do our integration. The antiderivative of 1 over y is the natural log of the absolute value of y. Typically, the absolute value bars become obsolete, but it can't hurt to be in the habit of putting them there. Now, the right side is a little bit of u substitution. U is the denominator, x squared plus 4, so du over dx is 2x. Well, we don't have 2x in our problem. We, have, we do have x, though. So that's 1 half du is equal to x dx. So we have 1 half times the integral of 1 over u du. And that doesn't look like a u, that looks like an o. So we have the natural log of the absolute value of y is equal to one half the natural log of the absolute value of u, which is x squared plus 4, plus c. Now, I really don't need those absolute value bars with the x because x squared plus 4 is always positive. So I really don't need those absolute value bars. This would be... Uh, one version of the general solution, okay, this would be uh, the implicit, meaning you don't have it solved completely for y. That's the implicit general solution. If we were to solve this for y, we would need to write this in exponential form. So we would have y is equal to e to the one-half natural log of x squared plus 4 plus c. Now, we're really going to have to dig deep for some logarithmic properties here. <clears throat> um, that one-half, remember the property of logarithms that says that we can move coefficients to become exponents? Maybe, vaguely. We need to do that so that we can cancel the e and the natural log. <clears throat> and remember how I showed you yesterday that you can separate that because you're adding c, decompose that to e to the natural log times e to the c. e to a constant is just another constant. So our explicit general solution would be c times x squared plus 4 to the 1 half, or the square root. Yes. 
when they are right beside each other like that. So we had to move the one half first. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. You can't take the square root of x squared plus 4 because of the plus. Yeah. You just have to do that. So this is the explicit general solution. Hey, guys, thank you. I think they came from the bottom there. Let's look at one with some trig in it. <clears throat> oh, life's so rough. Okay, again, I'm going to fix this so it's a little bit more obvious what's going on. Y cosine of x dy over dx is equal to the secant of x. So, I need to leave the y on the left side, so that's going to stay with the dy. I need to move the cosine to the other side and the dx. So, I multiply by the dx, because it was in the denominator, and I divide by the cosine. So, we have y dy is equal to, now, we need to simplify that, secant over cosine. Well, secant is equivalent to 1 over the cosine, and we can look at that as dividing by the cosine as multiplying by 1 over the cosine. And... 1 over cosine times 1 over cosine is 1 over cosine squared, which is secant squared. Okay, so now we can integrate. The antiderivative of y is y squared over 2. Notice they don't always, um, it doesn't always end up being 1 over y. A lot of times it is, but it's not always 1 over y. So that's just y squared over 2. What's the antiderivative of the secant squared? Tangent of x, and don't forget the plus c. So that would be the implicit. y is not completely isolated. If we were to isolate y, we would multiply everything by 2. <clears throat> Multiplying constant by 2 is just going to give us another constant. And then we would take the square root. So y is equal to the plus or minus square root of 2 tangent x plus c. <clears throat> and if you will remember, I mentioned this yesterday, you need to keep the plus or minus. And then if you're given an uh, initial condition, to find a particular solution, then depending on the sign of the y value, you would decide whether it's the positive or the negative square root. So if your initial condition was 1, 2, then you would just consider the positive square root. If it was 1, negative 2, then your particular solution would be y equals the negative square root of 2 tangent x plus c. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> Uh, let's look at, speaking of particular solutions, let's look at one here. Now this one looks really, really nasty. But it's not really that terrible. Okay, it just looks yucky. <clears throat> xy dx plus e to the negative x squared times y squared minus 1 dy is equal to 0. The initial condition is y of 0 equals 1. So, they already have the dx and the dy separated. Okay, they already have them separated. Uh, so, we've got to move one of these to the other side. Now, typically, we've been leaving y's on the left side and x's on the right side. So, I'm going to move the xy dx to the right side. 
Now, the only way I can do that is by subtracting it. Okay, we're not multiplying and dividing um, because that's not the operation on that side. Okay, <clears throat> now this looks a little bit more like what we've been doing. Y's need to be on the left side, X's need to be on the right side, so I'm going to divide both sides by Y. And I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the positive x squared. It's the same thing as dividing by e to the negative x squared. It's just a little bit more mathematically correct way of doing it. Because x squared plus negative x squared is 0, so that's going to make that cancel. So we have y squared minus 1 over y dy is equal to negative x e to the x squared dx. So we have fully separated our variables. Now we need to integrate. Any questions about the separating the variables? Um, when you move it to the other side, you move it to the other side by multiplying by e to the positive x squared. Because x squared plus negative x squared is 0, e to the 0 is 1. That's what's going to cancel it on that side. Okay. You could have looked at it as dividing by e to the negative x squared, and then when you divide by e to the negative x squared, you should pop these negative exponents to move it to the numerator. Okay? So, let's integrate this. Now, how can we integrate y squared minus 1 over y? Is that use substitution? No. Because typically if we're going to use u substitution with a quotient, we would pick the denominator to be u. Well, the derivative of y is just 1. That's not going to give us the numerator. Well, this is the case where we split it up. Okay, y squared over y is y. 1 over y, okay, just decompose that fraction, put each piece of the numerator over the denominator. Now, we can integrate y and we can integrate 1 minus y. Uh, now, the right side is a little bit of u substitution. The exponent is our u. So, the derivative of x squared is 2x. We don't have 2x in our problem, we have negative x, so we've got 1 half du is equal to x dx. So that negative right there, we move it in front, one half e to the u du. The antiderivative of y is y squared over 2. The antiderivative of 1 over y is the natural log of y. The antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u. So I'm going to go ahead and plug my u back in. And I'm going to add my plus c right there. Now, to my knowledge, I do not know of any way to completely isolate y there. Okay, uh, It would not be possible to find an explicit general solution here. We're going to have to leave it implicit. But they wanted a particular solution. So when x is 0, y is 1. So plug in 1 for y. 1 squared over 2 minus the natural log of 1 is equal to negative 1 half. e to the x is 0. So this really isn't as bad as it looks. A lot of this stuff's going to simplify if you remember logarithms. 1 squared over 2 is 1 half. Natural log of 1 is 0. Okay, e to the 0 is 1. So we've got 1 half plus 1 half. 1 is our c. So our particular solution, and it's not particularly pretty. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know. 